after the pastor or the prophet was sitting before him. Well, amen. And he said unto his servant, set, set on the great pot and see pottage for the sons of the prophets. Oh, let's cut the oven off. Huh. I'm getting ready to cook a meal and I want the ministers to eat first. Amen. Huh? And, and one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine. Oh, and while he was doing that, the ministers decided during the week to spend some time studying the Bible. Amen. That's a good thing. But while they were studying, getting the different herbs to put in the pot, I'm talking about the word today. Amen. Word, word. One of the ministers ran up on a wild what? Vine. Huh? Amen. This is good. Yes, sir. One of the ministers, now let me tell you, there's another word some of y'all may have in your Bible. It may say something like gore or yes, uh, what, what is it? Amen. And gather there of wild gourds. Gourds. Let me tell you what that is. Anybody know what wild gourds are? Yeah, like a squash. Or like a cucumber. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. So the ministers is in the Bible reading and he said, oh my God. <laughs> Pastor must have missed this. Let me pick some of this up to put it in the, the stew for Bible study. Yes. Well. <laughs> for early morning Sunday teaching. Amen. Listen to the book. Amen. And gathered therefore of wild gourds his lap full and came and shred them into the pot of pottage. And but without, listen to me, without any uh, clearance. Amen. Start chopping away and putting it in the word. Amen. Putting it in the, st the, the, uh, the, 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 the stew. Amen. In the pot. Listen. For they knew them not. For they knew them not. So they poured out. Oh, the, what you mean? For they knew them not. For they knew them not. Picking up something you don't even understand. Right, yeah. Right. Like Philip. Trying to break down something you really don't understand. Oh, yeah. Listen. Amen. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out. What did they say? And said, O thou man of God, there's death in the pot. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You see, you get around too long picking up, picking up bad herbs, Ooh. picking up stuff you got off the internet. Come on now. Some new re revelation. Come on. Throwing it in the pot on Sunday morning. Ah. Throwing it in the pot in the classes. Throwing it in Come the on. pot in the fellowships. Come on. Yep. Come Said, on. "Oh my God, there's death in the pot." <sighs> you see, that's what's being served in the church today. Amen. Death in the pot. You see, if you know, if you look up the wild cucumber, you look it up, in some places, that's that what they were talking about? Amen. Said the side effects will make you sick, and depending upon your body, sometimes the consequence is death. And let me tell you what's going on. People are dead in sin. Come on. We're dead in our lifestyles. Well. We're dead because we're allowing too many different people <laughs> to cook and touch our food. Uh -huh. Come on now. Huh? Amen. The Bible don't teach. Let anybody listen. How many of y'all just go around and let anybody just take their bare hands and just man just put yes. uh, just mix together? I mean, just take their fingers, stir up your food. Yes. You won't eat that, but you'll eat anything a man brings to you spiritually. Come on now. Ah. Woo, woo. Huh? Read the Amen. last verse so we can move. O thou man of God, there's death in the pot. And there's they death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. But he said, then bring meal, and he cast it into the pot, and he said, pour out for the people that they may eat, and there was no harm in the pot. Huh? And there came it a- Had to bring them in. Amen. Had to, had to take out what was put in that was bringing death. Yes, right. yes. Huh? Right. Then we got to take time to undo lies that have now uh, brought death to people yes. and caused division in the church. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm trying to tell you is, stick to the recipe. Yeah. Yes, sir. Huh? That's right. Stick to the recipe. Now, that don't mean you have to sound like me, preach the way I preach. God will speak to you in yes. a way that I can never speak. Amen. But it will always fall in line Amen. with the word of God. Yes. Philippians 2 and 2. Listen to the Bible. Fulfill ye my joy. Ha, ha, listen. That ye be like-minded. Be what? Like-minded. See, not like talking, not like mannerism, not carbon copies. That's it. If you go to these churches now, everybody's just yeah. like their pastor. Yeah. Like yeah. Talk like them, yeah. say everything. Yes, Minions. Listen, 
some things you'll get from your leader, but God don't make carbon copies. That's witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Witchcraft make copies. Yeah. God takes your personality, yeah. and then he takes what you offer, uh. and he gives you something that even I can benefit from. Amen. That's why when I come to the fellowship, I'm saying, Pastor, you're the only one that got it? No. Sometimes when I come to the men's fellowship, I don't teach. Mm -mm. The ministers teach me. Yeah, you never taught. I never taught me in fellowship in 12 years, yeah. 11 years, yeah. 10 years, right? yeah. never taught it. Why? There are some things that the men can say to me, especially the older men, Amen. that can help me to be a better man of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Huh? Not that we know everything. We don't know everything. Yes. Amen. Yeah, yeah. But there's a time and a place and there's an order. That's right. Yes. Can y'all say amen? Amen. So listen, you that wrote me, I'm glad you're enjoying the teaching. But it's getting really close to time for you to make a decision. Yeah. And quite frankly, the only reason I think you're still there is because you are an elder. Amen. Most of you haven't left your churches yet because you're still attached to people. Yeah. Amen. And when you let go of your, your soul tie, your ungodly soul tie, oh. then you'll come to truth. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Good amen. question. Give me the next one, Deacon. How or why does a woman need to submit to a man who she clearly is more mature than spiritually. Is that it? That's it. All right, I'm not going to teach long on this. We'll, we'll, when we get into marriage and submission and all that, we'll go into detail. But some woman here, sister, listening to me, you want to know why you got to listen to a man that you know more about than. <laughs> That's what she said. That's basically what she said. I live right. He don't halfway go to church, don't want to do right. Why should I submit to a man who don't know what I know? That's not on the same spiritual level that I'm on. Anybody ever had a good question like that? I don't think that's a bad question. But we got to give her an answer. That's right. First of all, submission is not my idea. Submission is of God. Amen. And let's get this out of the way. Women, you don't have to submit to every man. The, uh, listen, listen, give me Ephesians quickly. Amen. No, 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 no. I tell you what, Deacon. Uh, where does the Bible tell us why submit? submit. Huh? Ephesians. Ephesians. Why submit to your own? Come on, preacher. Amen. Huh? Ephesians 5.22. Listen. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Oh, now, this, 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 this lazy lie that's being passed around that women got to submit to men in general. Yeah. That ain't what the Bible says. That say. ain't what it says. You're a single woman. You got to submit to some man who's some boyfriend. Yeah. Whatever that is. God don't call women to submit to their boyfriend. Amen. Huh? That's right. Well, that's my boyfriend, and the Lord said we ought to submit. No, you don't. Exactly. You're a single woman. You don't have to submit to a man just because he's male. That's right. Can y'all receive that? Amen. But the Bible says what, Deacon? Wives. Submit. Yourselves unto your own husband. Now, listen, I ain't going to go too far into this because of time, but let me just throw this out there. The key word here is own. Amen. Let me tell you why. Because I found out that we have the hardest time submitting to something we pick. Okay, y'all didn't catch that. I've got a hard time submitting to something I chose. Well, oh, yeah. And that's what the Lord is putting out there. You picked them. Now you don't want to submit to them. Mm. Now, because of time, I can't go to every scripture, but let me give you this idea. Amen. For those that, whoever wrote me this sister. You don't submit to a man when he leads you away from God. That's right. Amen. Let me make that clear. Amen. Did y'all hear what I just said? Amen. He wants Not you to clear. go out there and start selling dope. Huh? Yeah. You don't do that. Amen. Talking about I'm submitting to my husband. <laughs> huh? He wants you to lie and steal. Yeah. You don't do that. He said you can't go back to church no more. Come on. Huh? Come on. See, submission is about order. Yes. Order is about chains. Chains about commands. Yes. And the order of submission is husband under Christ. Amen. Amen. You can't properly require of a woman to submit to you men if you are not under the submission okay. of God. That's right. Is that amen? Amen. Now, in the event that you are more, in most cases, most women are further along. Yeah. Y'all can say amen. amen. Most of the time, the woman gets saved first. She prayed for her husband to come in. Amen. Then he come along. Sometimes he grow and progress and pass her. Sometimes he don't. 
A lot of men, even in this church, lagging behind their wife. No more excuses. How long you gonna lag? Oh. Huh? Amen. Where you gonna lead her to if you don't want her to go to church? Amen. Amen. Where are you leading her to, sir? Amen. If you don't want her to do and live for God. That's right. My God is quiet in this. Where are you leading her to when you don't pray for her? Amen. Now, you may not know how to articulate as she does. You may not know how to, uh, you not, may not have as many words. Yeah. But let me tell you what every man in here can do for starts. Every man can start by praying. That's right. Start by reading. Yes. Start by studying. Amen. And studying ain't coming to church on Sunday, and that's it. Come on now. That's right. Let me answer the question because this can get lengthy. You want to know how do you submit to a man, or why do you have to submit to a man that you're spiritually superior to? All right? First of all, let me say this. Submission is about a word called yielding. Everybody say yielding. 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 What does it mean to yield? What does it mean to yield? Give away to. I like somebody said slow down. So you got to slow down so you can give away too. Yeah. Now, women, let me just leave it with this. How many more you got? Uh, two more. Okay, we got to move. Let me leave you with this thought. And then one day when we teach on submission and marriage, we'll go deeper. Here it is. You're riding down the highway. On the interstate. Mm -hmm. You're coming off the ramp. Huh? Amen. Coming off the ramp onto the interstate, and you're driving, ladies. You're driving an 18 wheeler. You know we do have women that drive. Uh, they got CDA on there, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> but when you're coming off the ramp, you see in that filed mirror you got a Mini Cooper. Y'all know what a Mini Cooper, a smart car. <laughs> Little Urkel looking thing. <laughs> Coming full speed. When you say that you're not going to submit to your husband because he is not as grown spiritually as you, what you just said is, because I'm an 18-wheeler, I don't have to yield mm. to the oncoming traffic. See, you're much bigger than the Mini Cooper, but it don't change the rule. Yeah. The rule is, you got the right of way. Well, yield. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, now, let me tell you about yielding. Uh, proceed with caution. Mm -hmm. Here's the good news about it. Did y'all understand what I just said? Yes, sir. Just because you're bigger, don't change the law. Yeah, yeah. You catch that? Yes, sir. Now, I've already made it clear there's a balance. You don't submit when a man tells you to go against God. But in everything else, you do your best yes. to submit. And men, give her something to submit to. Yeah. See, the Bible says husbands ought to do what? Love your wife. Husbands ought to do what? Love your wife. Now, let me tell you this. Anybody that truly loves somebody, it's easy to submit to somebody who show and that act and that prove yes. that they love you. Amen. Because when they love you, they show that you are in their best interest. Amen. Ladies, it's easy Amen. to submit to somebody who died for you. Amen. That's right. Because you know that whatever he says, yes, sir. it's coming from That's a right. heart that only wants the best yes, for sir. you. And what is best is what God says. That's right. Yes, Amen. Amen. Can y'all say Amen? Amen. So, what does the Bible say? Submit to your own husband. Amen. 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 Likewise. Likewise. Ye wives. Do what? Be in subjection to your own husband. And? That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation no, of the No, wives. no, no, no. You can get your husband just keep hitting them with the Bible. Come home preaching all the time. Is that what the Bible says? No. Come home and act like you his pastor. Amen. The Bible says if you want to win your husband, shut up and live it. Amen. Amen. 
Did y'all hear what I'm teaching? If it's one thing that turns, listen, ladies, if you, for, for those of you that's wishing for your husband to come in, let me, tell you, let me give you a little wisdom. Here's the wisdom. Don't go run tell your man every week about what this man said. That's right. Huh? Don't no man work all week long. Yeah. Want to keep hearing what this man say and he paying the bill. That's right. It don't work like that. Even if I am preaching the truth, see, that's not wisdom. Wisdom says this. Act so different. Huh? Stuff he, he never saw you do. Yeah. See, you're coming to women's fellowship now. Yeah. And now the women are telling you that you ain't got to walk around and talk down on your husband. That yeah. you can go home and love on your husband. Amen. And now when you get home, you acting different. He said, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> and he started wondering, what are they telling you over at that church? Amen. Whatever it is, you can keep going. Amen. Yeah, he going to go. Whatever you're doing, keep doing. Yeah, he going to go. Well, you know, since you mentioned it, the mothers at my church and my pastor teach me that I got to do this. You ought to come sometime. Leave it alone. Yeah. yeah. Drop a seed. Drop a seed. Yeah. yeah. Don't open the Bible. Don't go explaining Revelation. Don't lay hands on them. Just live it. Yes, sir. Somebody ought to say amen. That is wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. It's the principle thing. How many more, Deacon? Two more. Come on, we got to go. Amen. My church doesn't believe in modern day apostles. My pastor well, said. Y'all are really caught up on these apostles. <laughs> Especially in the Tidewater area, y'all got a lot of them. Wow. Huh? Everybody's an apostle. Yeah. Huh? Everybody's a, a chief and master, prophet and apostle. God. And I'm still stuck here as pastor. <laughs> huh? Now the drummers are bishops. Whoa. They've been past me. Deep. I stay right here. <laughs> Paul said, "When I got, when I received greater knowledge and revelation, he said I suffered for it." Yeah, amen. Huh? Amen. What it is, they getting titles but no revelation. That's exactly what's going on. Because if they were getting revelation, they wouldn't want no they more titles. No title. That's right. Amen. I'm all right with pastor. Amen. Right amen. But go ahead. My church doesn't believe in modern day apostles. My pastor said they are done away with. Oh the yeah. The twelve. The twelve. Yes. What huh? do you? What say what? Amen. My pa pastor says they are done away with the 12. What say you? I say your pastor knows not what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. Let's see if it's done away with. Let's see. See, it's easy to say something, but it's harder when people have to find what they say in the book. Amen. And there are a lot of people that say there are no more prophets. One brother met me down at Tidewater last, week before last, kept saying, I don't believe there are no more prophets. Well, I don't believe there are no more apostles. And he's stuck with it. As if he's going to ignore this. Give me Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some. And he, hold on. And he. Who is he? God. God gave some. Apostles. Uh-oh. And some. And. Prophets. But I thought there was no more. And some. Evangelists. There it is. And some. Pastors and teachers. Now, the stuff they need to get rid of, they don't. Amen. They got junior deacons. Oh. <laughs> they got deaconess. And nobody make a fuss. But now they want to get rid of what God says should be here. Right, right. Amen. Listen again to what God put in place. And he gave some, some apostles and, and some prophets and, and some evangelists why? and some pastors and teachers. And, but, but for what reason? For the perfecting to of the saints. Good, to look good. For the perfecting of the saints. Now, here's what happens. Uh -huh. If you take away those, those offices, uh -huh. those operations, you now stop the perfection of the saints. Huh? If the yes. saints going to be perfected, we need real apostles. Real. Real pastors. Yes, real. Not fake apostles. That's right. See, we call fake apostles Impos impostors. Impostors. Huh? Right, yeah. <laughs> A real apostle uh, is able to go deeper in the Bible than anybody. Right. Some say, well, pastor, you, you're an apostle. Well, that's, that's what you say. Amen. That's all right. The word apostle also means sin. I was sent, but I don't have to go around telling you I'm an apostle. Amen. One other thing about an apostle is an apostle can't be made an apostle by another man. Amen. Did you know that? Amen. So if you go to a church, remember how Fred Price, they made him an apostle. Yeah. They had the big service and all of that with the hats. It's totally unscriptural. It is. Because no apostle was made apostle through the hands of another man. Amen. All apostles come directly from God. That's now. Many of you ask, where is your pastor? My last pastor is dead. Amen. Well, who's telling you? God said. That's right. 
Now, if that makes me an apostle, that's your business, but I'm not saying that. Amen. 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 No need. I don't need to put on a hat and all of that stuff yeah. because all of it is foolishness. Yeah, the monk is foolish. Huh? Amen. If I'm sent, just let it be proven by the action. Let it be proven by the word. Amen. 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 But hold, hold. I found one more lie. I found one more lie in that scripture. Read it again, in that question. Read it again. My church doesn't believe in modern day apostles. Now we know better about that now. Come on. My pastor says they are done away with the 12. Yeah. Done away with the what? The 12. So many of you say that the 12 was the only apostles God gave. First of all, your counting is off. Mm. It was never only 12. So if you think it stopped with 12, then it stopped before Paul. Amen. Because Paul was not 12. Paul was not one of the 12. Amen. See how we, you preachers Amen. miss that. You fundam see, the fundamental circle, they said no more apostles, no more the gifts went out and all this stuff. You fundamental preachers miss the fundamentals. <laughs> huh? They're having too much fun. Huh? They're having too much fun. Yeah. Now, let's count real fast. The Bible says, if I'm not mistaken, in Acts, the first chapter, that he appointed 12. Who? Who appointed? Who appointed? Listen. Listen. Who appointed the 12? See if it's in Acts chapter 1. Deacon, look in the teens. Amen. Huh? Verse 13. Listen. And when they were come, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Yeah. Where a bowl with Peter uh -huh. and James and, and John yep. and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, uh -oh. Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zealots and Judas, the brother of James. How many is that? That's 11? By the way, while y'all are counting, there seems to be a whole lot of counting issues these days. <laughs> while we're counting, somebody give me Hebrews. Brother, give me Hebrews. Let me show you who the number one apostle is that they miss. Huh? Give me Hebrews 3 and 1. Let's see who the chief. You ever heard anybody call himself chief apostle? Yeah. Every preacher listening to my voice that call himself a chief apostle is an error. There is no man on earth that can be called a chief apostle. That's right. Or one. There's only one chief apostle. Amen. Give me Hebrews 3 and 1. Wherefore? Wherefore? Holy brethren. <laughs> Come on. Partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. I told you. Amen. So the first apostle was who? Jesus. Jesus. We got one. Huh? Amen. Now go back. How many was it in John County? Eleven. Twelve. There's twelve there. Twelve. Now, let me prove to you that it couldn't have stopped with twelve, because if you remember, we lost one. Judas betrayed Christ and then killed himself. Amen. Then he was replaced by a name that started. Come on, who, who replaced him? Matthias. Matthias. Yeah. So we now have the number back up. But then in the book of, oh my goodness, the 14th chapter, mm -hmm. the 14th chapter of Acts, see if it's verse 14, we're going to add again. Help, come on, let's help the ministers add. Verse 14. Let's help them add. Come on. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul. Hold on. Now we got two more. I'm, huh? Barnabas and Paul. Barnabas and Paul. Amen. So we already know that when your preacher said he went out with the 12, he stopped counting too early. <laughs> because Paul and Barnabas, read the whole 14. Amen. Heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out. Crying out? And saying, sirs, why do you, why do ye these things? Uh-huh. We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea now, and all things that are in. If I had more time, I would walk you through the scripture and show you that number one, there were at least total, there were at least 16. Are you listening? There were at least 16. So if your preacher stopped at 12, he stopped premature. Amen. 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 It was 12 in there. They missed Peter. Elder Boyd said they missed one. Ooh. It's very easy. Go back and count it again. Amen. Huh? Amen. Yes, sir. Disciples. Now, here's the key. The 70, which were in the book of Acts, that's important. The 70 disciples included women and men. People don't know that. But they were, they, they, all disciples were not apostles. Amen. So the disciples were followers, and then God sent the, uh, the apostles. Amen. 
Okay, the 70, yes, there were women disciples up in, uh, even in the, uh, at Antioch. When the Holy Ghost came, there were women. Because the Bible said this was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I pour out my spirit. And they talk about men and women. Where the yep. men and women were there, present in Antioch. Amen. Huh? Amen. 120? There. Amen. Now you got 70. So, again, these are the things that y'all keep putting in the pot. The wild cucumbers. <laughs> See what happens? Yeah. That the church believe is true. Wild cucumbers telling you stuff like you take one step, yeah, take two. God will take two. <laughs> that sounds good, but that's a wild cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't in the Bible. Part of devil. God won't put more on you than you can bear. That sounds good. That's a wild cucumber. Yeah. Tithing. Yeah. That's a wild cucumber. Amen. Huh? Amen. And no more apostles, my God, that's a wild goal. Women apostles. Huh? Women apostles. Yeah. You can't show me a woman apostle. Amen. And I already know about Dorcas and all the others, but I'm telling you now, no sir. No ma'am. All right? All Amen. right? Last one. Why does God let us suffer if we are his children? All right. We're going to, Deacon, I want you to hold that one, put, a, uh, put a tack on that. We'll answer that next week after we get here. I just want to share something. We're going home on this note. Amen. Everybody remember the word from last week? Yeah, no, y'all quiet. And everybody remember the word from last week? Amen. Uh, we're not complaining, but we're, we're come on, y'all. We're, we're not complaining and we're watching what we say. Amen? Amen. Now, how many of y'all can be honest and say it's hard to change your mindset? Amen. It's hard. It's, can I tell you something? It's hard to stop complaining. <laughs> when you are born, find me the South Phoenician woman, Matthew, I think it's 15. Listen to me. It's hard to find a way to stop complaining when you've been groomed and shaped as a complainer. Well. You know what we ought to do? We ought to go on a no complaining fast. Yeah. No negative <laughs> words for the rest of this week. That will be a great, wouldn't that be a great thing? I, I'm telling you this, it's just as hard as turning down a piece of chicken. <laughs> and that's pretty hard. Yes, sir. Let's go a week and don't say anything negative. Wow. Let's fast yeah. from negativity for a week. Amen. Let's oh y'all, y'all, anybody, anybody down for the call?